Sun Star Cebu's Know Your Candidate. I am Jeremy Libria, and here with me is the youngest candidate ever from the South District, Mr. Gerard Joe Binghai Abelia Carrillo. Today, we'll be talking about the different pressing issues that our city is facing and how will Mr. Carrillo will address it. How old are you, sir? Uh, right now, I am 23 years old. This coming July, I will be 24. What kind of leader are you? I'm the kind of leader who does not want to lead. <laughs> uh, I uh, ever since 2001, uh, me and Dad, we we're, we're not the kind. We we are not leaders by choice. People tend to push us to the position. Mm -hmm. Actually, uh, if you want to look for a leader, find someone who does not want to lead, but <laughs> find someone who genuinely love the people, mm -hmm. who respects the people. Because the people will choose you, no matter no matter if you want to lead. Even when I was still 17 years old, I was working in my, in Dad's office, Attorney Jerry Carillo's office. Mm -hmm. uh, he was the counselor. I was the his then paralegal. When I was still 17 years old, uh, he, both of us, we we made we co-wrote an ordinance called Cebu City Solo Parent Cash Assistance Program. No, this was an ordinance that uh, enabled solo parents to avail of a cash assistance every five thousand, uh, uh, five thousand cash assistance every year. No, and I was still seventeen years old then. Mm -hmm. When I was when I when, that, when I was twenty years old, uh, I also helped co-wrote the uh, bike lane ordinance because we because we and uh, Papa we, we believe that uh, uh, the solution to traffic is road sharing. Mm -hmm. Then, no, and now I'm 23 years old, and I'm campaigning for. Well, it's a very difficult, uh, difficult uh, platform, because most of the candidates, not even just in Cebu City, no, everywhere in the Philippines, they always campaign to increase uh, social assistance, dublihon, padakon, palapdon, But no one really campaigned to lessen the requirements. Not one, not one. Uh, and um, as a political scientist, I'm disturbed because my thesis when I graduated w uh, uh, political science was more on, more about the solo parents and their problems. And we found out that most of the solo parents, most of the senior citizens, most of the PWDs, they need to vote in order for them to get their cash assistance. Now here's the problem. Why do you need to vote to get your cash assistance? Yeah. Why? Uh, what's the what's the correlation between you as a voter and you as a senior citizen, you as a PWD, PWD or you as a solo parent? If you don't vote, does your age decrease? No, right? You're still a senior citizen, mm -hmm. right? If you don't vote, uh, will will you do you have an additional husband or wife? No, you're still a solo parent. Yeah. But why do we need to vote in order to get our cash assistance? That's the part I don't get. Because there is no correlation. Diba? And yes, we can say, and I did find out that in my thesis, it it's a filtering mechanism, right? So that our so that Talisay citizen, city citizens, Mandawi citizens, Lapu-Lapu citizens cannot just claim the benefit from Cebu City and say that they're a Cebu City citizen, right? Uh, yeah, that's true. It is a filtering mechanism, but I have to ask you, is that the only filtering mechanism? The point is, dili tamuhatag o kwarta sa dili tagalaing lungsod. Diba? From a different city, right? We don't because the Alcancita, mm -hmm. diba? So the main point here is that you need to be a resident, not a voter, according to the law. Although a voter certificate is a good, uh, good determination to to uh, to to signify that you are a resident in your in your city. The point here is, it's not the only determination. It is not only the evidence. Right? It's not the o it's not the only method of pointing out that you're a resident here in Cebu City. There's a lot of methods actually. Barangay certificate, barangay clearance, barangay uh, barangay uh, yeah, barangay certificate and clearance, right? Even even your tax receipts. 
even your bill in your uh, your bills of Beko, bill in Muspil DT, bill in MCWD, all those, those are proof of residency. Right now, we have thirty five thousand sa senior citizens, mm -hmm. right? In Cebu City. In Cebu City. City. Mm -hmm. And we have, and according to our data, we found out there that there, there are at least fifteen thousand solo parents here in Cebu City. Mm -hmm. They have an average age of. Uh, I believe 17 years old, right? Mm -hmm. And they each have an average number of five children. So 15,000 times five, how many lives is that? 75,000. 35,000 plus 75,000. We have 110,000 lives whom we cannot help just because they cannot vote. Mm -hmm. I don't get that. Right now, in Cebu City, we have at least 200,000 voters. And we have 100,000 voters out there who we can't help because they can't vote. We have, rather, we have 110,000 residents out there just because they can't vote. That's half of the population. Mm -hmm. And that's uh, what, I don't get that. I don't get that. Just because you can't vote for a politician, you're not given cash assistance. That's why I'm running. I am running for those 110,000 lives. Mm -hmm. I am running for the senior citizens who cannot get their cash assistance. I am running for the solo parents na di na ito mapaskwilaan ilang mga bata, ilang mga anak. Di na ito mapakaon. Tungod lang kay Dili sila kabutar. I am running for the senior citizen. I am running for the solo parent. I am running for the PWD who cannot get their cash assistance just because they cannot vote. Mm -hmm. And until and unless this ordinance is fixed, I will keep on running. When you go to Facebook, <laughs> a lot of candidates will tell you that uh, they're winning in the survey. We have yeah. more people than us. Mm -hmm. you, you, can, you can see that in, the fa in Facebook. But the problem with that kind of statement, it, it, coming from a candidate, it's very troubling. Mm -hmm. Because for him, what's important is the, the show of force. For him, what's important is winning. Next question. Mm -hmm. um, what can you offer to your constituents in mm. South District of Cebu City, sir? Well, if you've seen most of the councillors of the past, mm -mm. They, don't tend, they don't tend to listen. I am a researcher by heart. Huh? Mm -hmm. I am a researcher by heart. I love the art of research because I'm a researcher myself. Right? And the, the, the problem with Cebu City is that we tend to not listen to our scholars. Not, not our Cebu City scholars, but our academic scholars. There is a huge gap between our schools and the Cebu City government itself. Right? In fact, most of the schools tend to be secular. Most of the problems, in fact, in Cebu City can be fixed by our schools. If you look at USC right now in the political science department, I came, I came from that department. <laughs> Our research regarding solid waste management has been piling up since 2001. Not one political candidate has bothered to read that pile of paper. And that, that's just in USC. What, 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 UP, UC, STC, CIT. All these schools have different, different kinds of uh, methods in uh, solving our problems, but we tend not to listen. Mm -hmm. I want to bridge that gap. I want to bridge our, the, the gap between our schools, our academic institutions, to our government institutions. Right? So I listen. I listen. Because I'm not the best. I'm not even the brightest. But I am the youngest. Mm -hmm. And the youngest people right now tend to listen. Um, May, May elections. Mm. What ordinances will you prioritize? Like the first um, mm. ordinance? Yet? Well, the very first, as I said, is lowering the requirements. Mm. Lowering the requirements of our social welfare. Mm. Because most mm, politicians, uh, especially, you know, uh, traditional politicians, they think that giving out social assistances is basically a donation mm -hmm. to the people. Here's the problem with that way of thinking. What happens when you give them the money? What do they, what, what do they think happens to, to, when, they, when we give out the money to the people? Does it automatically disappear? Mm -hmm. No. Social welfare should not be thought of as a donation, as a privilege. No. Social welfare is an economic boost. 
it gives our people the chance to boost our economy. For example, uh, although senior citizens are retired, when they get the financial assistance, they can invest that money on our banks. Mm -hmm. Or they can invest that money on the Sari Sari stores. Microeconomic, barangay microeconomics. Diba? They can invest that on, uh, on, 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 on Sari Sari stores. Diba? Or even their allowances for their mga apo. Mm, diba? Yeah. You can help out the economy. Mm. You can help uh, jive the economy if we, if we just give them a little bit of push. Diba? First of all. Second of all, uh, it's basically their money. It's basically their money, their taxpayer money. We're just giving, them, giving it back to them because they need it more. Most of the politicians now, they tend to promise on infrastructure. They tend to promise on buildings, roads, mm. hospitals, BRT, LRT, OSRP, mm -hmm. <laughs> all those. And the problem with that, Jira, is that they tend to, all of them, most of them, they pro but what's the, pro what's, the, what's the point or what's the use of infrastructure if, I, if our people don't know how to use them? What's the point and what's the use of our individual freedoms, our individual rights, if our people don't know how to use them correctly? Mm -hmm. That's why ever since 2001, me and my father, we have focused more on capacitating the people. Our doctrine, our guiding principle will always be those who have less in life should have more in law. Mm -hmm. Because a lot of politicians, they're... they're, uh, they're Focusing on infrastructure, we want to focus on people. We want to teach them how to use that infrastructure so that they can help us too. What are your advocacies, mm. different advocacies? Well, first, it's always been social welfare for me. Mm. Social welfare, uh, social justice. It's always been that. That's always been my end game to, since, ever since 2001. But, uh, but ever since 2013, we have slowly focused on uh, environmental studies, mm. uh, environmental studies, more on community organizations. When 2016 was over, we, uh, we, te we, we rested a bit from politics. I told my dad that we don't, you don't need to be a politician to help Cebu City. So we focused more on agricultural farming in Mualboal mm -mm. and in Dumanho. And, we, fig and uh, we have a lot of people who told us that a wielding job outside in Kuwait, Singapore, Japan, uh, it yields a high income, right? mm. But they don't have money for, uh, wielding, for a wielder horse. Wielding ba? Mm -hmm. They don't have money for that. So, on sa mong ibuhat, amo sila gipautang. Gipautang sa amo sila. Uh, and they would later pay us only after they graduate mm -hmm. only after they go abroad and they have a and he, they yield a high income that was five years ago right now they they keep paying us out of 50,000 their income is 50,000 mm -hmm. they give us 5,000 every every month so it's okay what we did not know was that we were we were already doing what what lo, what loan private loaning companies would call uh, a student loan program, a study now pay later program. Mm. We did not know that. <laughs> In fact, when we, we had a friend from a loaning company, he told us, oh, you're already doing a, a student loan program. Mm. <laughs> oh, my God. Unconsciously. Unconsciously. Yeah. It was good. It was good. So I want to bring that to Cebu City. Mm. Because right now, uh, if you look at America, bisag uh, sa kapubli sila, makapaskwila sila bata, makapaskwila sila ingeniero, abogado, doktor. That's because they have an excellent student loan, student loan program outside. Diba? I want to bring that here in Cebu City. Next is, what do you have to change hmm. in City Hall and in South District? Like, first land City Hall. Hmm. Uh, right now, ako nakita yun no, sa, sa South District is the problem of fire, the problem of water, and the problem of uh, of allocation of lots, earth, mm -hmm. and the uh, 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 problem of uh, pollution, air. So, fire, earth, water, and air. <laughs> mm -hmm. Airbender. <laughs> uh, the, the, the problem here is that there's, uh, there's, there's a misunderstanding between governance 
and politics. In the South District, when you ask them, when you well, basically when you talk about politics, they tend to ask you, are you are you uh, are you BOPK or are you Baro? Mm -hmm. It shouldn't be that way, Jira. It shouldn't be that way. When you when you ask about politics, it should not be a question of which side you're on. It should be a question of what you want from the government. Mm -hmm. What you want from the government, how you want it done, and when you want it done. Simple. Simple. Because right now, if we keep on thinking about sides, if we keep on thinking about alliances, about political partisanship, nothing will happen, Jira. Nothing will happen. For the past 30 years, this is what has happened. And we have been overtaken mm -hmm. by different cities in the, in, in the Philippines just because we cannot get over, of, over our political partisanship. Mm -hmm. And we in Baro PDP Laban, we tend to focus more on working with others. As I said, diba, I want to close the gap between academic institutions and, government. and government institutions. We want to help each other. I don't care if they're uh, if they're from BUPK or if they're from Barong PD, but I don't even care if they don't vote. I only care if that they help the Cebu City. That's all. That's all. Diba? And that's the problem I see in the South District. Most of the uh, most of the problems there, uh, for example, drainage, diba? drainage, uh, fire, <laughs> the, the 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 fire crisis. The, the the problem is that. The, the barangays, most of the barangays there, uh, are not aided by the by the administration because they're not it's they're not its ally. Mm. That's the problem. For example, in Kinasangan, uh, there's a the, uh, there's a one huge city there, uh, Muslim community, the Santo Niño community in Rainbow Village. There's one huge sector of drainage that's been blocked by a private com construction company. And that private construction company uh, has we have been we have been negotiating for the past twenty years on uh, on buying the on buying the the lot at least the the, the area of the lot na maagian sa drainage uh, for public dominion. No? We have, we have we have we have uh, tried to negotiate for that, but the problem is the private contract the private company they won't sell the lot unless a certain politician wins. And that's very problematic. At least in Kyut, uh, regarding the fire crisis, they fixed it uh, with with fire hydrants per situ, mm -hmm. right? W what if we do that in all of our barangays? Every situ should have at least one fire hydrant because our fire trucks cannot go inside a very uh, close pack, mm -hmm. no? Situs, gagmayra kayo, digit kasuro to mga ato mga fire trucks. Unsa may mas mayo kung every situ na ashay? Fire hydrant, diba? Which is better? It, it's better, diba? What that this this is what Kiyot is doing. Mm -hmm. This is what uh, Captain Francis Paris is doing, and we want to apply that in the South District mm -hmm. to prevent the fire crisis. Now let's talk about the different um, mm. current issues in in the city and mm. how will you address it? Um, first is the traffic and transportation. Mm. Okay, I like that question mm. because. Uh, ever since 2016, I mentioned Ganiya, no? Ako, si Papa, we focused more on road sharing. You know, what road sharing means that the uh, usaragid kalain sa usa, uh, usa sa mga dagong sakyanan, usa kalain sa mga gagmay, usa kalain sa mga bikers. Okay. Diba? Because uh, one lane per size of vehicle. But uh, for, for the past years, I've learned. And in fact, there's a very, very good th there. There are very good theses out there that talk about the problem of the traffic in Cebu City. Mm -hmm. you no, know? right now, Jira, when you look at the road, we tend to think that the tra the problem of traffic is found with the jeepneys, with the habal habal, with the taxis, diba? But if you take a picture of the road, just take a picture of the road, take a picture of the road, count. How many PUJs? How how many taxis? And how many uh, habal habals? Ihapa sila compared to the number of private vehicles, diba? You will be surprised na mas daghan pag privado nga vehicle sa road masa sa mga public transport nato. 
what if we transform that that that, that number of private vehicles into uh, let's say bikes yeah, but there's more space on the road mm -hmm. yeah, but let's say traffic. let's say there's uh, 40 40 private vehicles on the road right there's 40 of them traffic kayo mm -hmm. but what of what if those 40 people inside those cars are bi are bikes they're using bikes mas tinipis ang dan Iba? Mas di bakanti. What if those 40 people on bikes, they're on a bus? O sara na ka bus? Diba? The problem, the problem of traffic in Cebu City is never about public transport. It's of the influx of private vehicles. And there is an influx of private vehicles because uh, we have a concern regarding public transport. Mm -mm. The so safety, the, mm, the safety, the health sanitation issues, mm -hmm. and uh, the transport efficiency issues, diba? So the main goal, the main solution to solve traffic is to upgrade our transportation system, our public, public transportation, transportation system, system. diba? Uh, it's not really, the, the, it, not only just BRT, because people always say, nagababag miss BRT. We, no, mm -hmm. not, in fact, Kami ni Sir Mike Rama, kami gasugod sa PRT. But we, we don't wanna... Gasug, nasug, nasugdan na bitaw, hindi doon basat, lain sa kayo mag, magbabagbabag pa mi. Mm -hmm. No. Padayo na 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 na. Padayo na 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 to. Diba? The point of the BRT is a, as a, an efficient circulation of, tran, uh, of transportation, of traffic here in Cebu City. But what we also want to do is focus also on LRT. Because the main point in LRT is sa tanang mga traffic deacons probinsya. Kala mga tanang mga traffic na na pwede ka mag mga pribado nga mga sakyanan. Magamit lang sila sa LRT. Mm -hmm. Diba? So, Instead of using their own private, private vehicles. vehicles. So that ma decrease ang influx of traffic sa Cebu City. Mm -hmm. So we have LRT for the province. No? Kana, ang imong tra travel time gikan sa Cebu City padung sa Bogo. That's usually around, what, 4 to 3 hours? Eh, 3 to 4 hours, mm -hmm. diba? It will become, what, 1 hour? It, it it will be accelerated for 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 multiple times diba so mona we we decrease the traffic from the province mm -hmm. and in cebu city we use road sharing that's how, that's the way we should do it how you will address the the city's um, problem on garbage and solid waste management the the, the thing about uh, garbage collection segregation and all that it must it's it, it shouldn't be just a government initiative it should be also it should also it should also come from the people themselves mm -hmm. in every in every political uh, initiative that me and dad start it always among among plano ana dapat our our glass method it should not be a top down model it should not be a bottom up but a top down meaning ang gobyerno magbuhat sa tanan na igo ra mutuo ang mga tao. Di sa dapat pwede nga ang mga tao ra magbuhat sa tanan na igo ang mga gobyerno igo ra mag No, it should be a hourglass model. There should be initiative from the government and there should be initiative from the public. Uh, from the public. Mm -hmm. So what for example sa Mambaling, no? Grabe if you look at uh, uh, there there's this one huge river sa Mambaling Padung sa SRP na grabe kaklag sa sa basura. Ako gid dakit an nga ang ilang basura Okay, both gikan sa drainage system o gikan sa dagat. Mm. Diba? Nung nga nung gikan man sa drainage, kaya mga tao manglabay man. And even if na, ang mga tao, nasa ibang mga tao na nakibaw mang limpyo, nasa ibang mga tao na manglabay ra. And that's because wa, ang ato mga garbage truck dili makasuod sa mambaling area. Diba? So, what we should do is the government should find uh, should uh, should find a clever way, no. Should, should find a clever way to enter those cities. I recommend we have e-bikes in Dulho and Mambaling, mm -hmm. and those e-bikes mao ni makasud sa mga sityo na gagmay. So we contract the the e-bikes to carry our load of trash. Mm -hmm. Na kanay ato mga garbage trucks sa main road nila magwat. Tulo ni sila dapat uh, biodegradable, non biodegradable, and residual, de ba? Ilo na ihatag dito sa mga trucks ang mga trucks na bahala adto dito sa landfill na sa appropriate nga landfill that's the government side mm -hmm. the people side daghan kay mga youth groups especially our friends no uh, uh, acro and taogama mm -hmm. they uh, they actually help the society 
For example, sa Acro, I'm 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 a member of Acro myself. Mm-hmm. Every month we 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 conduct operation tuli. We conduct medical missions. We conduct environmental missions. Mm-hmm. Diba? Even I have my very own uh, youth group, Youth for Order uh, Order Unity Respons- Responsible Servanthood. Yours. Mm-hmm. Diba? What we do is every month mangita mi river. Magkuha na gimi, magpick o malimpiwan na gud namo. And we don't start with the with kadang kadang hugaw. We start with asa ang source sa hugaw, mm. di ba? Kana. So right now, what I envision regarding uh, garbage and uh, garbage and soil based management is that we should invest on our uh, garbage trucks, no? Mm-hmm. Not only on our garbage trucks, but also uh, initiate uh, clever ways to enter our sitios. So that maka do not makuha ng atong trash, di ba? And our people should also clean the river themselves. We should find initiative or or, or, or incentive for them to clean. For example, Tisa. No, mm-hmm. what happened in Tisa is that Cap uh, Zafra, uh, for every fifty plastic bottles, he will give he will give a kid art supplies, mm-hmm. school supplies. No, that's very good initiative. That's very good incentive, the right? What if we do that for our citizens? What if we hit two birds with one stone? We hit inflation because we have a problem with inf- yes. inflation, right? And we also hit the environmental problem, the traffic management, uh, the, the the garbage, sorry, so, sorry waste management, right? The problem. What if for every waste product we find, we turn that into money, right? Mm-hmm. Because there are the gamag bangga mo collect ng basura, mo salvage. Yes. Regarding plastics and biodegradables, in fact, kana atong biodegradable na mga waste, we can convert that to renew to uh, renewable energy or to waste energy. Mm-hmm. That's one of the platforms to Edgar Labella, diba? We can use that. We can actually use that. It's time now we find use for our waste. So regarding plastics, no, kana atong plastics. Pwede na siya maggrind, pwede na siya magcrush, pwede na siya mahimog material uh, or or uh, kaning component sa bitumen mm-hmm. or otherwise known as asphalt oh, okay you see mm-hmm. we 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 can use our plastics sa, sa tong mga dan diba we can do that and the government will buy that from our people and from that money we create our own situ co-op no mm-hmm. and in that situ co-op we sell goods at a much lesser price each uh, member of the co-op ang ilang tampo sa, sa co-op is either they pay 100 pesos na every month or they pay using their waste mm-hmm. diba which is kind of oh. two birds with one stone we hit environmental problems we also hit inflation mm-hmm. so we start a co-op regarding a uh, trash and use that and use that trash as either waste energy or materials for the roads and the government should find initiate uh, should find clever ways to mm-hmm. enter the situ. Mm-hmm. So answer, how do you um, solve the uh, peace and order mm. and uh, as well as the illegal drug problems in mm. the city? The problem of illegal drugs, just like our traffic system, is uh, with to say that to say that the the problem, for example, the so traffic, eh, the problem of traffic is jeepneys, PUJs, mm-hmm. and taxis. It's an oversimplifi- over- oversimplification. Just like the problem of uh, the war on drugs is drugs. It's an oversimplification. Uh, for example, right now, Nature Spring, this bottle of Nature Spring is part of our commercial system. Okay. Right? Mm. Pila mani, at least uh, 15. 15, 15, 15 pesos, right? Now, ikigabaligyan ako ani, ako nagipalit ni mo. Our civil law will state that if I don't pay you 15 pesos for this, makakiha ka na ako. That's civil law. Diba? Because this thing is part of our commercial system. Diba? It's governed by civil law. Mm-hmm. Now, let's say, let's say that this nature spring bottle is no longer part of civil law. It is a prohibited item. So it's no longer governed by civil law. Diba? Now, I don't pay you 15 pesos. What do you do? Mo reklamo. Mo reklamo yes. pero wa man kay mabuhat kay wala di, di man ka demand na ko mo bayad. Kay wala may law mo mo govern mo nga dapat ko mo bayad nimo. Di ba? Mm-hmm. So unsa may buhaton nimo? Magpatay na lang ta. 
in economics, if you decrease a certain, uh, if you, uh, what happens when good in a in a war on drugs? When you prohibit drugs, you decrease the supply, mm. the supply, but you do not decrease the demand. In order for us to defeat or uh, or whatever, no, if for in order for us na mawa ang atong addiction sa certain item, dapat both the demand and the supply should decrease. Unsa mo gina itabok karon sa sa war on drugs? It's that the demand the the, the, the supply decreased. Yes, prohibited good siya. Pero the demand did not decrease. What happens? Continuously oh, increasing. There is now what we call a black market. Mm-hmm. Now should be the time to focus on rehabilitation. Yes. Rehabilitation asad. Because we found because na na may initiative para mo mudakop nila mo re- mo rehabilitate na sa ta. Let's focus on rehabilitation. Pero na ikaw pa mm. doon ngan said ang mga tao. Yes. Yes, because as, as I found at dumis at at adto ta sa Manila at even if adto ka sa Gawas no, the best uh, teachers in rehabilitation are rehabilitated drug addicts. Mm. Because it's more personal for them. Mm. No? They but can relate. To they the can relate. To the no, the one. Yeah, yeah, honestly, I I I I na ato yung mag magdakasud kog AA meeting, mm-hmm. no? just to observe uh, with me and my classmates we cried we cried because our story atong madunggan nga stories ka ng mga addict it's actually very damaging to the person mm-hmm. especially kung gamay kang ka nang madakpan ka to tell you the truth Jira me and dad we have been uh, in our law firm we have been defending clients na innocent yun na tungod lang sa Kaning pressure sa war on drugs. Uh, there, there, there are there are se- several anomalies. Kasagaran pagin sa mga klinti kay batan on na maluoy ka ba? Maluoy ka tanaw ba? That's why we that's why me and dad we want to focus on rehabilitation, rehabilitation because a lot of people are focusing on capturing their capturing the drug addicts and treating them as drug addicts, mm-hmm. de ba? As criminals. It's time we think about treating them as victims. Because not only are they victims of the drug addiction, they're also victims of the poverty cycle. Mm-hmm. It is an inescapable cycle. Do not ever think that just because you have a job, you can get out of the poverty cycle. No. Mm-hmm. No. Just because you have money, you can get out of the poverty cycle. No. Look at our, look at, look at our uh, citizens now. They're having a hard time. It's because we we have a we have trouble av- alleviating that poverty cycle. We need to end that. Mm-hmm. We need to give them the boost they need. We need the government. We need governance that uh, set the example. We need rehabilitation. The infrastructure development. How uh, would you address that? Well, aspect? Uh, we have talked about it sa mga kandidato regarding sa CCMC. Uh, I don't want to delve into the issue of CCMC because it's very, uh, it's very complicated. It's very, I don't I want I don't want to delve into that. It's just that uh, if and ever the CCMC is uh, established na yun, operational na yun siya, mm-hmm. maybe we shouldn't just we should not just pour our resources sa, sa, sa CCMC. Although it's good, no, it's good na naatay Cebu City Hospi- Community Hospital. Mm-hmm. But uh, I think we should empower our barangays. We should empower our barangays. Ano man, kids sa my first responder in kasog na ay maunsa sa barangay. Ang barangay hall, mm-hmm. diba? mga tanod. Diba? We should capacitate them on CPR, on basic medical training. Mm-hmm. Ano na ba? We should we should capacitate them. They are our force multipliers. They should be. They should also multiply medical skills, mm-hmm. diba? Uh, CPR resuscitation tanan and kanang for example ang kanang CCMC dapat kanang kanang mga rooms kanang mga facilities sa CCMC it should be reserved only for major operations kay daghan na bagtaw sa daghan na bagtaw sa Cebu City dili ka cater ang ang CCMC yes. di ba it should be uh, it should be reserved for people na grabe kid di, di na gyud pwede ka di pwede ka gawas because of their uh, because of their uh, uh, ailment. Mm-hmm. Pero kadto mga tao nga padung na padung nag rehabilitate rehabilitation na healing na mm-hmm. 
di ba? In the stage of recovery. Na stage of recovery na dapat adto sila sa barangay hall. The barangay hall should have a facility for that. Aside mm-hmm. from an, uh, uh, sa, well, uh, we city talk city. we we talked with Eric Espina regarding sa Cebu City College mm-hmm. because his platform was to establish one uh, one Cebu City College here in the south and one in the north. And my my plan together with Joy Pesquera is that we initiate the student loan program. Mm-hmm. Di na nato ibutang ang student loan program sa City College, so that we finally, finally, after how many years, Cebu City will finally have its own City College. Mm-hmm. We don't have to depend on city scholarships and all that. We have something to be proud of, diba? Mm-hmm. And we when we sh- and it should be it should be the state of the art, no? Na na. Na, na city college well, it should it should rival <laughs> it should rival even uh, our academic institutions mm. today <laughs> um, your message lang to the voters to the voters mm. mga suking tig paminaw karong panahon na ting eleksyon na karong sang panahon na amang gawas tanang saad sa mga politika pag 2016 ni saad sila nga idubli ang senior citizen cash assistance hantod karon wa gyud punta na kita nga na dubli nila pero sige gyud pun sila saad nga padakon palapdon patas on ang senior citizen cash assistance bisag sa solo parents pa or sa PWD pero wa gyud usa nila musaad nga paggamyon ang requirements ma'am sir ang tuyo ug tumong nganong nidagan ko kay para magpagamay sa requirements sa atong cash assistance dapat dili na mo kinahanglan butar usa mo ka kubra sa inyong kwarta wala ko ni dagan tungod kay anak ko sa akong amahan wala ko ni dagan kay para mangwarta ko ninyo ni dagan ko kay para makatabang ko sa 110,000 ka kinabuhi na kinahanglan tabang na angay tabangan sa pagkaroon ma'am na atay problema sa pagkaroon atong solo parent ang atong PWD ang atong mga senior citizen kinahanglan pa sila mamutar usa sila kakubra sa ilang kwarta I want to fix that and I intend to fix that karon kumo adto mo sa gawas sa inyong kasada adto mo sa Facebook adto mo sa sa, sa ma, napuno sa il, atong mga ang ilang atong kasada napuno sa ilang naong ang Facebook na puno sa ilang ilan. Pero ang rason makadaog sa kompanya, dili ang Facebook. Dili ang naong sa dala. Kung dili, kamu. Ma'am, kamoy rason nganong nidagan ko. Kamu rasay rason nganong makadaog ko. Muna mo hangyo ko ninyo. Sa pagkaroon, naatay 110,000 kakinabuhi na kinahanglan o tabang. Tabangi kog tabang nila. In truth and in honest, I don't deserve your vote. But I do need your help. I need your help in helping the 110,000 lives. There are 110,000 lives out there who cannot pay for their maintenance medicines, who cannot pay for their children's tuition fees, who cannot pay for their food just because they cannot vote. I'm asking you to help me help them. To help me help the 110,000. Right now, right now they they are suffering, but it does it doesn't have to be this way. With your help, we can we can decrease the requirements for our social welfare. With your help, I can change Cebu City. Mo na muhangyo ko ninyo ma'am. Karong umaabot nga May 13 elections. Gerard Joe Binghay Carillo Magpalandong sa inyong gahom Isip putanti sa Cebu City Para sa kunsihal Diri sa Cebu City May ngudo O salamat kayo Ninyong tanan Alright Okay. Thank you so much, Sir Gerard Joe Binghay Abelio Carillo, for ma'am. gracing us this afternoon. Um, we wish you all the best this uh, May 13 elections. All right. Okay. Thank you. Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's all that we have for this episode of Sunstar Cebu's Know Your Candidate. Mm-hmm. I'm again. I'm Jeremy Juarez Libriat. Thank you for watching. Good afternoon. <laughs>